Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father, from our Savior Jesus. Amen. As we were uh, singing this song, uh, dear Christians, one and all rejoice, I, I just want to relate one of those verses because it, it, I think it captures well um, what I'm going to say in, in the message. I guess I could just read that and say amen. But no, I think I'm going to give you the whole message. But anyway, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to uh, share today from God's Word, actually from the epistle lesson. <clears throat> but, and here we were singing a song that I thought dealt much more with the gospel. But I want this, this verse here will capture what we're going to talk about. It says, verse 9 said, Now to my Father I depart. That was clearly in the uh, gospel lesson, from heaven to earth ascending. And heavenly wisdom to impart. That's the part I wanted to really focus in on. Heavenly wisdom to impart. The Holy Spirit sending. In trouble he will comfort you and teach you always to be true. And into truth shall guide you. Into truth shall guide you. The uh, epistle lesson doesn't really say it in that way, but that's exactly what it's talking about. I like this uh, epistle, and I'm going to uh, kind of go, go through it with you, even though it's been read once already. I like that in there. What caught my attention first when I was preparing for t today was that line in there that from verse 17 that says, every good and perfect gift is from above. In my pastoral ministry, I remember relating that verse many times when I go to a local hospital, often one of the local hospitals here for, <clears throat> to, to uh, see a mom who recently had given birth and, and you know, that the happiness and the joy of her mom and dad when a new baby is born and that verse seems to fit so well, every good and perfect gift is from above, comes out from the Father of lights. <clears throat> the, gifts, the gifts of God are great to us. And in the James passage today, uh, you know, the great gift in this season is certainly the gift of salvation, the resurrection of Jesus. But you could tell in the gospel lesson that we're moving toward the ascension and we're moving toward Pentecost because Jesus tells in the gospel the Holy Spirit's coming. And here in the uh, epistle lesson, we learn that the Holy Spirit and, and the, it, Holy Spirit's going to teach us about truth. The first chapter of James is in the context here. It's so much about find, finding wisdom. Finding wisdom for life situations and through life situations. And specifically, James is mentioning here things like temptation and trials. As we go through temptations and trials of life, uh, where, do, where do we lean upon? Where do we find wisdom? Is it in the world? Is it in God's truth? Later on in this passage, uh, the Holy Spirit through the Apostle James is saying that the truth is from God. But just prior to this text, or the first, the first line in the, in the epistle uh, says, do not be deceived. It's interesting. And the next verse after the epistle, which we are not reading today, says, be doers of the word, not hearers only, wherein you are deceiving, deceiving yourselves. So when we see, when I, we see a reading that's uh, 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 front and back there with the word deceiving, we should pay attention to that. But in the context here in James 1, finding truth and wisdom in the midst of life's it uses the word trials and temptations. Maybe trial, life's, life's challenges. Where do we find wisdom? And that's why uh, uh, James says then in the first line in verse 16, do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. He's saying to us as Christian friends, don't be deceived. The world around us is so uh, invasive and so strong in our lives that we don't often even recognize it. It's just there and it infiltrates into our lives and we, we sort of miss it if we aren't wise with God's word. Just prior to the text was the part where it says, where it says, when, when I'm tempted, 
Do not say I'm being tempted by God, for God cannot tempt with evil. No, but a person is tempted when they are lured and enticed by one's own desire. Be not deceived, James is saying, to think uh, that God is the one who brings evil into our lives. But know the truth, know wisdom. That's what James started this, this selection of scripture with is in verse five of this chapter, a call to wisdom. Do not be deceived. You know, in, in the, the uh, Greek language and how that translates into our language would be sort of, in our contemporary language, would be something like, don't kid yourselves. Don't, don't deceive yourselves. Don't, don't, don't kid yourselves, my brothers. In other words, don't think that God is uh, interested in bringing evil into your lives. We do that with our own sin. Our own sin, we can do that on our own. We know that the devil, the world, and our own sinful flesh is very capable of bringing evil and, and troubles to us. But instead, don't be deceived with that. Because true wisdom, uh, James is saying, true wisdom is that every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation of change. You want to know true wisdom? God is the one who brings every good gift to our lives. In John 1.1 1, 1, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. At Christmas time we sing, from heaven above to earth he came. This is God's gift to us. His only Son coming down from heaven to live the life that was required of us, a life of righteousness and faithfulness to God's demands and commands. And we deceive ourselves if we think that we can do that on our own, or somehow we can meet up to God's standard. I can't do it, I'm sure you can't either. From heaven above to earth I come, this is the great gift of God. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. Jesus Christ, our salvation. That's exactly what it says later in our text in verse 18 when it says, Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth that we should be the kind of first fruits. Of his will, this is God's will, salvation, that we might know the grace and favor of God. In the Old Testament lesson of the day, it said it this way. It said, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. Those are really good words for us. I think in our world today, when we listen to the news and we see what's happening, I mean, we can go through all the different, with, with uh, inflation, with gas, gasoline, with, with uh, 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 lawlessness. Uh, we, we look at these things, we think, what in the world is going on? We become afraid. We look at the world, and that does bring us that. Don't be deceived, James says. The world's wisdom will not satisfy. The truth of God is where we need to rely and find our hope, our peace. God is my salvation, Isaiah said. I will trust and not be afraid. It's normal to fear things and be afraid, to feel, feel, that, feel that emotion. But the point here is the truth of God is that we don't have to be afraid of how God feels about us or what God has done for us in Jesus. Every good and perfect gift comes from him. In the gospel, Jesus, or the Father says it this way. Uh, Jesus says, it is your advantage that I go away for the helper of the Holy Spirit needs to come and will come. And what did he say? Will guide you into all truth. Here is wisdom, what James is talking about. Just the same thing we read in the gospel. The truth of God is what inspires us, which holds us, which keeps us. It's the wisdom of God, as we saw it in verse 5. All the good gifts of God come to us from God. In the gospel, the Holy Spirit brings us the truth of God. And that truth is in Jesus himself. From heaven above to earth I come to bring salvation. All of his good gifts were the, in that verse 18, it says, he calls us to be his. He brought us forth by the word of truth. In our baptisms, God brings forth our salvation to us. It becomes ours 
brought us forth means that we have been converted into the truth, into faith. This conversion is the work of God. It's by his doing and his choice and in our baptisms we become God's people. This is all the gift of God. Every good gift, perfect gift comes down from the Father above. How blessed we are. He brings us forth by the word of truth. God's word is truth. Be not deceived, James says, by the things of the world that seem, seem better even, seem better and seem brighter and more glossy than the things of God. But it's the truth of God that the Spirit brings to us that's centered in Christ and, in the, and the Word of God where we find our peace, where we find true wisdom. It's by God's Word that we've been brought forth. The first fruits of His creation, of His creatures. You know, when you think of the harvest and the first fruit, some would make the claim that some of the first fruit of the harvest is the best. Well, the Christians are the harvest of the proclamation of the truth of the gospel. The fact that we're here, the fact that we're here and worshiping and in faith is the work of the proclamation of the truth of God and the work of the Holy Spirit. Praise be to God who brings us his good gifts. And then as that text continues, uh, James says, Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, so the first thing is quick, and then there's two slows. Quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Well, how well do we do with this? How well are we quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger? Here we're seeing an application of the wisdom of God. Of God. The righteousness that we have before God is God's gift to us in, the, in Jesus. He was obedient in our behalf that we might be justified before God. In his sacrificial death, he brings us forgiveness in life. In his resurrection life, we have eternal life. A new condition in which Christians live is this righteousness. This is the result of our faith connection. It is all God's gift. And when it talks here about the righteousness we can produce, it's just simply talking about a faith that shows itself in living. A faith that shows itself will never be perfect in our quickness to hear and slowness to speak or slowness to anger and our relationship will never be perfect. But we have the forgiveness of God and the gift of the Spirit and the wisdom of His truth to lead us forward. It says, receive with meekness the implanted word that's able to save your souls. God who has been gracious to us in Christ and given us every good gift, calls us then to live in his righteousness, to live in the forgiveness of sins he's given to us, and then to go forth and be his people by his spirit. To live with the wisdom and the truth of God as our guide and, as a, and what we hold in our hearts, rather than to live by the world's pattern of deceit and deception. This is what God calls us to do and empowers us to do. We seek and live by the wisdom that comes from God's word. Often we can deceive ourselves when we rely on the wisdom of the world, the world which has rejected God. But we're so thankful today that every good and perfect gift comes down from God above, including with wisdom and salvation and truth and his word. We seek to live by the wisdom that comes from God. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all understanding guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.